Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mobile App Academy. This is our live building series where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps on the Now platform. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow, and I'll be your host for today's session. Uh, but I also have Hannah Basana in Kinnear, uh, David Merch, Charity Katz. We all represent the mobile team here at ServiceNow. We all want to give you a warm welcome for joining us live here today. Um, but if you are joining us for the first time, um, welcome to the session. You know, we have our product experts here to help provide guidance, best practices, and try to answer any of your questions that come up. And we typically host these mobile app academies every two weeks at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and if you're curious, our recordings are also posted to YouTube on the ServiceNow Now community channel. Just want to point out a few resources that we do have available before we get started. If you are new to mobile, we highly recommend that you check out some of our self enablement resources, such as our mobile guidebooks and white papers, which you can all find on the uh, mobile community site. But we also have a plethora of other resources, such as labs, um, mobile trainings on the now learning site, as well as our playlist to all the previous app academies, which you can find sessions like you know, how to get started with mobile agent, uh, as well as now mobile. Uh, as well as 30 other uh, 30 other App Academy sessions. Um, and if you do like these se sessions, our ServiceNow team, um, we also do host academies for HR service uh, delivery, as well as platform foundation, platform analytics, virtual agent, and many others. But you can find these series in their respective community forums uh, just by navigating to the forum tab on uh, Now Community. But with all of that said, um, let's actually get started with today's topic, mobile publishing version 3.1. We have Hannah Basana uh, from our product team today to take us through everything that you need to know around mobile publishing. Oh, um, <laughs> I just realized we have the wrong title slide here. But today's topic is mobile publishing. Um, and Hannah's going to uh, walk us through you know, what it is, why it's important, some of the updates for version 3.1 and how to get started. Um, and we'll also give you a walkthrough as well. Um, and just to speak through to some of the things that we're gonna show you today, this will be a one hour session. We'll start off with, with a quick 10 minute overview uh, on what mobile publishing is and why it's important. But then we're gonna jump into about a 40 minute recorded walkthrough. Um, There's some sensitive data that we had to blur out as we go through this mobile publishing process. And so Hannah has prepared this video for you, um, but we will open up to some Q&A afterwards. So just hang on tight. Um, but with all of that out of the way, uh, let me go ahead and pass it over to Hannah, who will take us through mobile publishing. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to make sure to share my audio so the video works. Excellent. So hello all, um, and I'm gonna stay out of presentation mode because I have a very big, very big monitor, but hi all, so glad that you could join. Um, as David mentioned, this is our mobile publishing overview and config. So mobile publishing has gotten a lot of uh, attention recently. And some people, the first question that comes to people's minds is, what is mobile publishing and how does it differ from mobile branding or mobile white labeling? And our honest answer to you guys is those three words are totally synonymous. Um, we call it mobile publishing. Some of you who might have been familiar with our process um, a year plus ago might know it as mobile branding. And then generically, it's called white labeling. So I'm going to go into a little bit of our overview. Uh, what does mobile publishing provide? So you can create your own corporate mobile branded app. Um, this will enable you guys to have your corporate identity and promote adoption, as well as secure company data. And specifically, mobile publishing provides automatic, automatic branding process to incorporate your corporate identity, uh, including a custom app name, icon, colors, and splash screens for all of your apps. Obviously, you're welcome to use, and most of our customers do find that all they need is our ServiceNow GA apps, um, the general the general family releases that we have, our most recent being San Diego. But should you guys want to edit a little bit more, this is where mobile publishing comes in. We also have additional mobile security, including data protection, service access, and policy reinforcements, as well as um, 
manage device, mobile device management through Microsoft Intune and BlackBerry. We also have a few different distribution methods now, and this is new as of version 3.1. I'll get into that in a little bit. But customers can avoid listing their app on public channels, such as the App Store or Google Play Store, by leveraging some of our private distribution methods, or they can opt to put it on the more public stores. And then we also have ongoing app management. Once we create this app, you're not on your own to figure out how to continue to use it and optimize it for your team. So you'll automatically get security and iOS updates and patches for these mobile apps. I do want to emphasize. I do want to emphasize that mobile branding, mobile publishing is not the only way that uh, our customers can get what they need out of our apps. So our mobile clients do take well, less time to deploy. It is immediate. Um, and you can also internally brand and customize your app's theme just in the ServiceNow GA apps. If you just want to have, after you click into the ServiceNow app, have the layout and the format look in the same colors as your company logo, you can do that through theming. Um, but for external branding, that is where we enable the customer a bit more and use mobile publishing, as well as the opportunity for private distribution. So as mentioned, some companies might find that they do not want their internal app to be published on the public store for anybody to download. Obviously there is still login um, <clears throat> still login security constraints, but still that might make some cu customers uncomfortable. So we allow for private distribution methods. And this can be anything through working through your MDM provider. It could be sending, posting a link to the app on your internal portal or literally sending out a package file to each of your employees. We also um, have, as mentioned, the EMM capabilities for mobile publishing. It's important to know that we only support BlackBerry and Intune. So if you have your managed devices or a, ma a managed app and you would like to do that through other vendors, mobile publishing might not be the best solution for you. But we find that this is the use case for many of our customers that BlackBerry and Intune is typically what they were using anyway and works for most of them. Now, just to go into a little bit further, for mobile publishing, customers can request to implement their company's visual identity. And again, the customizations that are supported are the app name itself, the app icon, the splash screen that loads while the contents of the app is loading. You can have private distribution methods, our new and improved public distribution methods and editing those themes. Now, I do want to say that this is a paid plugin. This is not something that you would immediately get um, through ServiceNow. It's mobile publishing is included in pro enterprise or app engine SKUs uh, or a la carte. And this is what I'm going to be going into in a lot of detail here for our demo. At, but the customer build process at a high level is here. The customers submit a build, specify what device type, typically iOS and Android, the icons, themes, splash screens, et cetera. ServiceNow will build that app and typically either test it for you or allow you to introduce your own testers. And then you will approve those releases and the, then you can deploy it to your employees. So I'll go into this process a bit more because it does differ by what type of operating system you want and what type of distribution method. Now this is a big slide, but I promise that I break it down um, in the subsequent slides and the demo. So the, as mentioned, the process is different by operating system and distribution type. iOS, you can see just generally that there is an extra step involved. And typically that means that the iOS builds can take as long as four weeks. Apple's a little bit more particular about what apps they allow in their app store generally to be created. And so they have a approval process that takes a bit longer than Android. And Android is a little more short, a little more sweet, and it takes one to two weeks to complete. So I'm gonna break down each of these individually in the uh, live demo to come. But one thing I really want to emphasize is it is not enough to simply ask your account exec to enable the paid plugin or buy mobile publishing a la carte. You're not finished. There are a few prerequisites that you need to have in order to complete just the first step of the process, and that's requesting 
the public app or private app. And in both cases, you'll need a, Fire, a Google Firebase account. And this, it, this will generate a few things for us on the form you'll see coming up, uh, but also allows to set up push notifications on Android. For private distribution, there is another account you need to have prior to even requesting, and that's Apple Business Manager. Now, a lot of our customers who choose to go with public distribution tend to have a little bit more experience with uh, creating apps and deploying it to their employees. So they will likely already have an Apple Business Manager account, but we do specify that it is required specifically for private distribution. And that's because it generates a few things we need for the form as well as used for the distribution of that app. And then, We'll also need the names and emails of your iOS app testers, and you'll see exactly why in a minute. There are a few other accounts that we, that we say that you need. It's requisite to complete the process, but not for the initial form completion. And that's things like Apple Test Flight account, the Apple Connect account, a developer account, and then of course, a managed Google Play account to actually post this app to the Google Play Store. Now, before I go into the config, and that's my face on, on that man, um, before I go into the actual configuration of mobile publishing, I wanted to pause here and give you guys um, an opportunity to ask questions about what mobile publishing is or isn't. And if you have questions about the steps, rest assured that I'll, I'll address those shortly. David, do we uh, take questions in chat? Do we let people unmute? How does, how does the question part work? Uh, we usually let uh, folks ask their questions in the chat and we'll bring them up, um, but it doesn't look like we have any questions so far. Um, so maybe we Great. wrap up till then. Fantastic. Okay. Um, one more thing I want to show y'all just for familiarity before we go through the live config are these slides. So I broke it up per distribution process. Typically when you request a, a published branded app, you'll want both iOS and Android. So let's just focus on private versus public. So again, here are the prerequisites and other requisites for a private app. And then here's the process. Both Android and Apple, both, yep, Android and Apple start with the submission of a request. ServiceNow will build the app. And then the middle part is testing. The latter part is deployment. And I'll go through the specifics, but I wanted to familiarize you guys with this slide, as well as the public app process. You'll see public here, public here, and public here. As we go through the live demo, you'll want to know which we're looking at. And last thing to say before I move on to this video is I will be going through almost all of these steps in their entirety. The first couple steps are ones that ServiceNow owns, so I can speak with complete breadth, knowledge, and accuracy on those steps. But as we move into the more Apple or Google-specific processes, we do have internal documentation that'll walk each of your admins or iOS developers through exactly what they need to do. But these processes are owned by external companies and are subject to change. So if you're watching this recording or YouTube video, uh, a few months from March, 2022, things might change, but we do also link out to those external documents so that you might be able to cross check and make sure you know exactly what you're doing. But I do my best to demo everything in this video. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Now, the first thing customers needs to know is that there are prerequisites to mobile publishing. First off, it's a paid plugin that's included in pro enterprise or app engine SKUs, or it could be bought a la carte. And in order to distribute your app publicly or privately, there are a few prereqs and other accounts that need to be created, such as the Google Firebase account for either distribution We'll generate a few different pieces of information we need to complete the form, as well as how to set up push notifications for Android. In the private distribution, there's another account, the Apple Business Manager, that we will absolutely need, as well as names and emails for iOS app testers to complete the form. You'll see a few other accounts that are necessary, indicated by an asterisk, that are requisite to complete the process, but not for initial form completion, like a test flight account, 
Apple Connect, Apple Developer, and a managed Google Play account to eventually push the public app to your users. Now, as mentioned, this is a paid plugin. So step zero for a customer is to work with their account exec to enable the mobile publishing plugin. The customers would go to the ServiceNow store, so store.servicenow.com. You can type in mobile publishing in the search bar and you'll see our app and solution listed here. If your account exec has enabled mobile publishing on your instance, this button will highlight and say get. So you can click this and either automatically or manually uh, upload this plugin to your instance. A good way to know whether or not it works is the next step in the process. You go to your customer instance and we're going to type in mobile branding. One thing to note, this does still say mobile branding and mobile branding, mobile publishing and mobile white label are all synonymous. The formal process is called mobile publishing inside of ServiceNow, uh, but this is some older, older terminology. So if you see branding comes up, it just means the same thing. The request branded app will be the area where you spend the most time. A few things, while it loads, you could see that loading square. Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer to populate every area in this form. Please just wait until you can see these buttons so that you know that everything is loaded correctly. Now you'll notice there are three different large headings here. These are the three different types of apps that you can brand within ServiceNow. First, our fulfiller app, our requester app, and then our soon to be deprecated onboarding app. And you can request one of each. And each time, each time ServiceNow publishes a new family version or general release every six months, you'll need to come back in here and click update custom branding request to uptick some of the new features ServiceNow has put out. But you shouldn't have to do that any more than every six months or at max once a year if you want to leverage the features that we come out with on the mobile team. So I'm going to show you guys how to create a custom branding request. We'll do a fulfiller app. And first we'll do private since that has a few more pieces to the puzzle here. So first we'll notice that there's a drop down. This is new for our customers who have used mobile publishing prior to November 2021. You can pick private or public. We'll do private first. And you can pick to deploy iOS or Android. One thing that you should note is that this form is dynamic. So the iOS branding setup and Android branding setup will appear or disappear depending on which. So you know all information that show that is shown is required. So first let's put the requester contact information, last name, first name, email. And this is going to be your point of contact for each step in the process for this app creation. So this really needs to be the person that you want to be in the loop every step of the way. And you'll notice there's this add testers section. If I toggle off iOS, that add testers section goes away. So this is an Apple specific requirement where you need to, as a customer, identify who your testers are going to be for your iOS app before you ever request it. You cannot add testers later. It's a bit more of a manual process. So be sure to add your testers. And another thing to note is your testers do need to have an email linked to an Apple ID. And this is an Apple requirement, not a ServiceNow one, but please ensure that their email is linked to an Apple ID. And lucky enough for us, Johnny Tester's account is associated with Apple ID, so I can add him right away. Now, our form does not have validation, by the way, so it'll let you add it one way or another. You need to verify with your tester. We'll go into the generic section of brand your app, long name. This is a private app. So let's go private app, long name. I'll go with three to make sure it's unique. Private app, short name, three, private app, three. And man, so this MAM support is to, if you would like to have a managed mobile device and you want it to have application management, 
This is where you would select your vendor, either Intune or BlackBerry is what's supported right now by ServiceNow. If you would like your whole device to be managed instead of just this custom app, you would hit none and work with your MDM provider. So we'll keep none for now. Native client and client theme, you can, these are pre-populated, you can ignore, but the universal links host, this is pre-populated and it matches your instance ID. This can be edited in the previous page, but ServiceNow does not suggest you do so because it could break some of our connections. What this is used for is for deep linking um, and customers who need to use it will likely know what that is. This EULA and privacy policy is a new section for us. We have now enabled customers to not only use the default service now end user license agreement and privacy policy, or they can upload their own EULA URLs and privacy policy URLs right here. We'll stick with service now default and move into the iOS branding setup. So the iOS branding setup, the Apple DEP ID, org ID, org name, these are the two fields that necessitated some of our prereqs for the private process. I'm gonna pull this up one more time just so everybody is very familiar. For iOS private, you need to have an Apple Business Manager account because it generates both the Apple PED, org ID, and org name, and is used for distribution. So. The way you find this is you'll have either your iOS developer on site or your mobile team or you yourself create an Apple Business Manager account. When you have this account, you would go into your settings and go into your enrollment information under org settings. What you'll see here is your organization ID as well as your org name. And these are the exact fields that our form requests. So I'm gonna copy this org ID Please make sure you put this in exactly as it is written in your Apple Business Manager, especially this organization name directly above your org ID. If I leave out the dot, if I don't capitalize it, this has to be exactly the same or else the connection between our systems and Apple Business Manager will not work. So I'll put in the org name, ServiceNow comma Inc period. There's no space before, no space after, excellent. And then I move on to the more fun part. For mobile branding, you could always use the default ServiceNow branding icon splash page and colors, but half the fun of this is using the custom branding icons. And you can see here we have app icon, splash screen, and splash screen color. Now, each of these fields does have a few, few criteria you have to follow, specifically the size and the shape. So please make sure for app icons, they all follow a 1024 by 1024. For the iOS splash screen that loads while the content that appears on your app while the content of your app is loading, it must be 2048 by 2048. Square icon with company logo and name. And the splash screen background color. Should the image I selected not fill up the entire user's device, I can pick a nice purple to match. And that concludes the iOS branding setup. I'm just going to collapse this header and we'll move into Android branding setup. Now, oops, you'll notice we have a few fields here, Firebase app ID, Firebase IP, API key, excuse me, and Firebase project ID. These are why we required a Google Firebase account. And I'm going to flip on over to our Firebase account. Now, most companies will have a prod and sub prod as we do. If you just create it, you may only have one project. That's perfectly fine. Let's click into the project to create an app. Now, our sub prod does have a few apps already there because this is our mobile publishing pipeline. But what the next step is to create an app for this project. You do this with the plus button. You can create several different types of apps, but ours will be Android. And we have a few fields to fill out. This Android package name is extremely important. This is how we link our system to Google. And it's right here on the form, your Android package name. This package name is pre-populated by combining our standard.com service now B2B, your app long name, 
as well as a dot plus the type of ServiceNow app you just requested. In our case, it was a fulfiller app. So I'm going to copy that whole string, put it here, no space before, no space after. This one will be, what do we say? Private app three. Was that what I called it? It doesn't have to be the same, but it sure does help. We'll register the app. You can ignore the signing certificate. It's optional. And as well as these config files and SDKs, we've simplified our process to where you no longer have to do anything with this. And you can just continue to your console. Now you'll notice the number of apps here has increased. I can click and we are going to look at our private app three right here. So first I'll just, you know, enable it on the dashboard. Sounds great. But let's click the settings. And in these settings is where we will find some of the important information we need. The first field was the Firebase app ID. And I'll just move this over so we can see what we're looking at. The Firebase app ID is scrolling down here. This is our app ID. Let's make sure we're on the correct app. You can see how you can toggle and the app ID will change. So ensure you're on the correct app and pull the app ID here, which will always have colon Android colon somewhere inside of it. So you know you pulled the right thing, colon Android colon, fantastic. A Firebase API key, scroll back up. Here is our API key given to us by Firebase. Oh, let's make sure to get every character. And finally, our Firebase project ID. Now you'll notice there's a project number and project ID. Please make sure you grab the actual project ID, not the number itself. Excellent. And that should wrap us up on Firebase for now. I'm going to move this out. And we can continue on the Android branding setup. This trusted certificate authorities is a special use case where the ServiceNow GA apps, specifically for Android, can allow two different types of certificate authorities. One is the proper certificate of authority created by a government or a business. Another is a user added certificate authority. And this just allows a lot of the flexibility and customizations known that Android's known for. And sometimes that can give security issues for some customers where they do not want to click opt in to trust, but in more cases than not, we're fine with as much flexibility as possible. Here we see the theming options again. I'm going to use custom, of course. And Android has a few additional pictures you need to add, including a foreground launcher icon versus a background launcher icon. The, all this means is when you're, when you're moving your apps around on your Android phone, the foreground launcher icon will wiggle and follow your finger and the background launcher icon will stay in its location on your device page just so you can see it um, typically. And I don't see why you would have them different, but sometimes you can add some extra flair there. An Android notification icon will be the photo to the left of any text you have for a banner notification and then the Android splash screen. Again, used whenever the content of the app is loading. And then we'll add splash screen background color, a nice kind of blue purple, maybe just plain purple. Great. And scroll up, you can see we have completed all of the necessary fields. And we're good to go. So we're going to hit submit. And we're reminded that this process can take two to four weeks. Now, as this is submitting, it will say an email notification will be sent if there are any changes in the build status. And I'd like to show you this is why it's important to have the correct person in the requester's contact info because we will send automatic email saying, thank you submitting your mobile branding request. You submitted it here. This is the platform, the app name, and how long you can expect to hear back as well as some helpful resources. And here we see our build is in progress. It usually takes two to four weeks and we'll send you an email.
And this is our app, private app, long name three. And we see the build is in progress. Now I'm going to show, I'm not going to walk you through the whole process to, again to request a public app, but I will show you what the differences are. And the first of which being the requisites are a little bit different. You no longer need an Apple Business Manager account. You do still need an Apple Connect, Apple Developer, and a managed Google Play account. Um, but these are other requisites for later in the process, and you just need a Google Firebase account in order to fill out the form. And again, the first step is the same, submit an iOS branded app request, submit an Android branded app request. We do that on the portal. And for a public app, we will build the app and provide you an X-Archive link or a AAB file. And I'll show you all what that looks like shortly. So, You'll notice I cannot request another fulfiller app because we can only request one of each type. So I'll go down to the requester app and show you all how public might differ. First and foremost, there are additional terms to agree to for public publishing. And that's because we are publishing to the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So there are a few things you have to agree to here. This is the same. But you'll notice under the point of contact here, there's no longer add testers for iOS or otherwise, it doesn't change. And that's because for a publicly branded, for a publicly distributed branded app, the customer themselves will actually own their App Store Connect account. It's no longer ServiceNow's that we, we work on behind the scenes for you guys. You will actually own your App Store Connect account, and you can manually add your testers at any point in the process. So that's why we no longer ask for it here. We also no longer ask for a long name. That's actually more of a Android background piece of information. So you just need to have your short name. And then subsequently, the iOS branding setup, you'll notice there are a few fewer fields few fewer fields yeah uh, to fill out here and that's again because we don't require an Apple business manager account beforehand you'll be hooking all that up on the back end and the Android branding setup is all the same so when you submit here really it's only the back end of the process that changes for a public build I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this build so I can talk all through some of the statuses you'll be seeing. And again, this is just the same page that we went to request branded app. But now, as we already have some apps requested, you'll notice you can no longer click new custom branding when a build is in progress. And so this is the private app we just created. And if you have previous builds, you can see under here in build history, you'll notice requester app doesn't have any build history. I haven't requested any requester apps before. But for a fulfiller app, you'll be able to see if you ever wondered why I put this as number three, it's because private app long name two and private app long name one have a few different statuses here. You'll be able to see build canceled, build failed, and when the time comes, as this one continues to go through the process, I'll scroll down and eventually it'll say ready for testing. And you can also see my build history here. Now I'm going to pop over to a different Thunderdome simply to show you guys a few more statuses. So we're still in branding, request branded app, and this is still the mobile branding setup. So if you see here on the Fulfiller app, I'm going to open up this build history because we still have a build in progress. And you can see my super duper app, the branding update is complete. This is a public app and we can see we have a file to download and nothing else to do here. I'll kind of come down here and we'll hopefully, yep, this is an Android. You'll see that there's a file to download, I'll talk you through that, but nothing else to do once build is complete. Something else I wanna call out is once a build has completed, 
you'll be able to see this new button, Update Custom Branding. And this is what I spoke to before on anytime ServiceNow has new mobile features in a family release, Tokyo, Rome, San Diego, Utah, Vancouver, et cetera, you'll need to come here and hit Update Custom Branding. You can choose any of the builds you already have. I'll just choose this one. And it'll pre-populate a lot of the form for you, uh, theoretically. There we go. It'll pre-populate a lot of the form for you. So you don't have to remember some of these more challenging uh, keys. Now I'm going to back out of this and go back to our customer instance where we created our public our private app long name three. And I'm actually going to start focusing now on this public HB app. We'll notice it's already ready for testing. Public apps are made ready for testing much faster just because they don't have to go through as much of an approval process with Apple. So from now on, we'll be really focusing on this public HB app. And I'm going to start talking about the public distribution process for both Android and iOS. I'll go ahead and pull up this slide again because I think it's very helpful. So we have already gone through submitting the branded app request for Android and iOS. Next thing you'll see is we build the app and we'll provide you with an Xarchive download file and a AAB for iOS and Android respectively. What you're gonna do is you're gonna download those files and it'll, then this at this point, you as the customer will start testing your app. Now, these latter parts, these latter steps, step three, four, and five, and then step three and four for Android are processes that are owned by Apple and Google respectively. I am not going to walk you through the exact steps because these steps are not our process to own and could change at any point. But I do want to, since the public app process is a little more challenging than private, walk you guys through and show you where some of the documentation is. So we have our, and actually I'm gonna keep our little process steps down here so we can all see. For an iOS public, we'll have an Xarchive download file and we'll see here we have an Xarchive file here. Now, what we'll do is we'll just click and download it. And this is the part of the process where we'll start relying on our ServiceNow documentation. This is, I wanna call your attention to this now support doc, support.servicenow.com. I'm logged in internally, but this is also an external facing portal. And we have a document that walks you through as best we understand how to update Xarchive and create the IPA for public distribution. Unfortunately, that's not beer. That is a different uh, file type for Apple specifically, but it'll walk you through starting from creating your app ID in the developer account, because if you'll remember the Apple developer account is a requisite to create to finish this process. It'll walk you through how to create your app ID, getting your distribution certificate, creating your provisioning profile, going to App Store Connect and creating your app there. And again, the App Store Connect account was used to set to test your iOS app. How to update your X archive file, go through a, a few system properties, and then ultimately re-signing the X archive, uploading to App Store Connect, and once you've done that, you'll need to approve the build and deploy to the App Store. So we have two more steps to go. So first off, on your app, and again, we created this one, but we're using this one representatively, you'll see the Approve Build button. Now, you will do this in order to deploy your app to the App Store before hitting approve build, go ahead and make sure you read this. This is a public build to complete deployment. Please follow these instructions. What this will do is shoot you out to our docs.servicenow.com documentation page. You can see request a branded Android app for public, request a branded iOS app for public. If you click in it, it'll recap the steps I just mentioned in this video, but also 
what to do next is downloading the X archive file, signing it, and creating the IPA file. And again, here's where the documentation is linked that I referenced earlier. And lastly, if you scroll all the way up, you'll notice this green button. Universal Links file is ready to download. Once an iOS build is complete, you can download the Universal Links file and upload it to your host, aka this instance. We have our configuration instructions here. So you know exactly how to configure your AASA file. But please note you have to log in as an admin on your own customer instance in order to do this. Now that you've configured your universal links and your push notification files, you'll be able to approve the build within App Store Connect itself, which will deploy the app to App Store. Now I'm going to stop just short of approving the build because you'll notice that customer approves the build as the last step in both of these processes. And I'm going to go through the Android steps. So we've definitely gone through step one, submitting the mobile brand a request. ServiceNow has built the app and provided an AAB file to download. And I'll show you how to download the AAB file for testing and then uploading to the Google Play console for said testing. So first we'll go to our portal. Here you'll see we have download AAB file. Now this takes a little bit of time, so I went ahead and did it ahead of time. You can see here we have our public AAB file right here. And as mentioned, we'll need to test this file. And let me show you all the best way to do that. This is where the requisite managed Google Play account comes in. And so what we're going to do is go to our Google Play store, play.google.com. And I'm on just the all apps generic console. And the, this Google Play store will either already have your app on here but just in case, you could go to create app if you don't see your new one. We'll give it a name. What was this one? Public HB. Yep. Public HB. It's an app. It's free. I confirm and yes, I'm cool with those. I will create this app and it says start testing now. So let's go ahead and go into the testing module. And we can create either open or closed testing. To be honest with you, I'm not sure the difference, but hopefully this is where your native team will help you out. But either way, you're going to need, this is where you'll download your app bundles and the closed testing looks very similar um, or upload your app bundles rather. So I'll take my AAB file, drop it here, and it's going to generate my signing key. And as mentioned, this is a bundle. So it's going to take a second to upload. Now, while this is uploading, some of you familiar with our mobile publishing process might say, hold on, I'm familiar with an APK file, but not an AAB. And what the notable difference is, is for the public Android process, you'll receive an AAB file. And for your private process, private, you'll notice it says APK. Um, now, not to get into the weeds of it, but let me pull in this nice picture that explains it. All an AAB file is a packaged, uh, a packaged Android file, which has a few other important files on there. Your Google Play Store will parse these out and push your very well-known tried and true APK file out to your users to download the app to either test or to just have as an end user. So I think I spotted the AAB being finished. Yep, here we go. It has come up with a release name based on some other things I can edit. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now I have a release. I'll go back to my apps, check out my public HB app, and I can do start testing now. 
A few of my new tasks are selecting our testers, creating a new release, and going forward. I'm not going to go through, but you do need to create a new email list. This is why we didn't ask for your testers in Android. But once you're finished testing your app, you can go to the same dashboard after clicking your app, scroll down, and release it. So before releasing, you'll definitely need to approve this app on your instance. But let me show you what, uh, but this is where you'll eventually release it. You'll need to complete some initial setup tasks first, listed here. And you can release through this little portal. Now the last step in our process is to approve the build in both cases and deploy to either store. So let's go ahead and approve the build and see what happens. And it says our app is almost ready. So now that the build has been approved, it's going to refresh the page. And you'll notice there, you'll notice there's nothing else to do here. And this is because it is now up to the customer to deploy their app on either store. And this is kind of the more manual process in addition to uploading the files themselves, but it can be a bit more manual of a process. And that's why we suggest the customers with a little less technical acumen on deploying these apps might want to go private. So let's talk about the private steps. So now we're in private. And you'll notice the Android steps are largely the same. ServiceNow has built the app and provides the APK file. And again, the APK file is just something you can hand directly to a user for them to download a Android app. That customer can test the app directly on their device, you'd approve, build, and then deploy with your preferred method. And what that means for Android is either deploying your APK via your MDM provider, putting that APK on a intranet portal, or emailing directly out to your employees. You no longer need this Google Play console for private. This is only for public. But for Apple, you will notice that you deploy their app with MDM or Apple Business Manager redemption codes. Now, come back up here to the prerequisites and you can see that your Apple Business Manager account was necessary not only for the inputs on the form, but also to use for distribution for your private OS apps. So let's go into our Apple Business Manager and see what that looks like. I'll go into business.apple.com and Go to your custom apps, which is a setting you had enabled previously. And we can see all of our custom apps that we have. I'll click on Red Soda Can as an example because I know that this happens to be a test app. But eventually, after you have approved your build, then we will publish to your Apple Business Manager account for you. So we go into the Red Soda Can app and you can see you can buy licensees. And this is where you can have the managed distribution method via MDM or through redemption codes. Now redemption codes are free and you can, let's just say I want five redemption codes. I only have five employees to whom I'd like to deploy this Red Soda Can. You'll hit purchasing, get, and I'll have an order number when I purchased it, and soon I'll also have a file, hopefully that'll, there we go, I hit download, and we'll be able to see all of the redemption codes that you can make available to your employees right here in order to deploy your app privately. Now, one last thing I'd like to mention is I showed you how to redeem this via your redemption codes, but if you click managed, what that means is it's deployed through your mobile device management provider. And again, ServiceNow supports Intune and BlackBerry. And the steps to actually deploy a managed app are here. I'll show you guys one last place for documentation. This is our community.servicenow.com, our communities portal. We'll just go into forums. I 
go to mobile apps and platform and deployment considerations. And here we go. Sync your branded mobile iOS app to Microsoft Intune. And we have introduction to MAM. We have a few really good documents here, but this is how you can distribute your app using EMM or your Intune, you can hit find out more in either of these and it'll give you all the information you need. Additionally, these are your MDM providers, so they should be able to help you with deploying your app in any way you would like to. Okay, one last thing I wanna say is now that we've already approved our build, you can see the build is approved. The very last thing you'll need to do is enable push notifications for your new Android and iOS app. And the documentation to do so is in our very handy docs.servicenow.com portal. You can search the documents for mobile push. Here we go, mobile push notifications. Look for the most recent release, San Diego. And here you'll find a document on how to configure push applications for iOS branded apps, Android branded apps, and your standard ServiceNow GA apps. And then one note on the iOS branded apps is this document is pretty thorough. On step eight, it'll ask you to upload your P12 certificate file. And where you find that is going back to, oh, extend this, going back to your mobile app branding setup page looking down at your approved build and you'll see this column push certificate ios only so you'll have a file either right here or as a part of the bundle that you download just depending and that's it are there any questions from anybody Great, I see there are still a few participants on. So guys, thank you for dealing with the potentially blurry video for you. I suppose it's a Zoom issue, but um, we will upload this to YouTube as well. And I can publish the full 50 GB video to make sure it's nice and crisp for y'all. Um, and David Ha, is there anything else? Uh, I'm seeing one question from Ken. Um, he says it's unrelated, but how do you set up a client string field on a form based on the combination of two different fields? Um, Ken, we might need you to clarify on what you're trying to do here. So I'm going to unmute your micro fest. Uh, I'm going to allow it to talk and then feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah, um, I have an input form and I want to um, select information, uh, say it's dependent, like on a client and a, uh, uh, a category. And I wanna populate a string field based on what the user selects for the client <clears throat> and the category. And I'm not sure how to do that, if you can do it. Uh, Ian, would you happen to know off the top of your head on this one? Yeah, so... Um we can auto populate a string field when that input form screen loads. Um, but uh, unfortunately, to have a separate string field based on after the form is loaded and um, based on the selection of you know values on the input form screen at that point uh, is not currently supported. But that's definitely something um, I would recommend to put on up on our idea portal as a requested feature. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, we have another question from uh, Mercia. How do you update add features to a published app? Do you go through the same process each time? Uh, good question for Hannah, actually. Yeah, actually, this is something that we've enhanced our form <clears throat> Uh, with and you no longer initially you had to go through the entire uh, form again and request the same your same branded app and make sure that you put in a lot of the same fields but now we have an updated button on the form itself that will simply say uh, request updated mobile branding and it'll pre-populate with some of the fields you've already with the fields that 
set up your old app so that you won't have to do it yourself. Awesome. Hope that uh, answers your question, Marcia. Um, any other questions before we wrap up today? Okay. And if Marcia wants to hang on for one minute, I can show my screen or it is um, as it is a part of the video as well. Uh, Hanny, you can probably share your screen for you know a quick minute and then we'll wrap up from there. Yep, shouldn't take a second. There you go, Marcia. So we are on my instance. I typed in mobile branding to request a branded app. And you'll notice that this is the private app long name we were creating in the, in the demo. The build is still in progress. Excuse me while I unblock my calendar. And down here on latest builds, once the branding is complete, you'll have the new custom branding button, but also the update custom branding. And when you click this, you can pick which build you'd like to duplicate in the form and it'll pre-populate a lot of this stuff for you. So it sh and uh, so that should be a lot faster in the, in the requisition process. And also because Apple has already approved this app once and it's simply an update to that app, the approval process through Apple will be expedited as well. Awesome, thanks for taking us through that, Anna. Uh, looks like we have another hand raised from Ken. So I'm gonna unmute you, Ken, feel free to. So uh, where do I uh, go to put that idea uh, in uh, about um, dependent client? Uh, the idea of portal. Um, I don't have the, you, you're talking about where where is the idea portal? Yeah. Yeah. Um, David, do you have the uh, URL off? Yep. Uh, let, me pull up, let me pull up the uh, screen share real fast. Uh, I got it, David. Perfect. Allow me in my... <laughs> so <laughs> I'm on the docs.servicenow.com. And all I did was search for idea portal. Okay. And it'll talk you through what it is, how to submit an idea, sort through a few, and do a few more uh, management thereof. Uh, and then do you also have a community uh, where you can submit the idea as well? Yes, of course. So there's right. that. And then this is communityservicenow.com. You go into, I believe it to be forums, right, David? Yep. There's also a tab right on there too. Perfect. Oh, yeah, there it is. You're right. Ideas portal. So community.servicenow.com, you'll click ideas for it and I'll have you sign in so that you can post it. But again, the tab is right here. Oh, All right. Away. Thank you. No problem. Sweet. Uh, looks like there's no other questions. So we'll go and wrap up. Uh, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Again, sorry for the blurriness, but just know that we will improve the resolution when we do the upload. Um, and also there's going to be a quick survey that will ask you, you know, um, if these sessions are relevant to you, we want to make sure that we are hosting the right sessions and the right topics uh, for everyone. So definitely let us know in our post-session survey what topics you want to see in the future. Okay. Uh, but with all that said, thank you all for joining us again. Uh, we'll host another live session in two weeks and uh, we hope to see you there. Thanks, everyone.